Good evening. Good evening. Um, thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, we're so glad that you're able to make it today. Um, if I can please just go straight into our program and ask the good Bishop Luana um, to please uh, start us off with the opening prayer. Good evening. Greetings to all in the room, so to say the virtual room, and um, that we shall be sharing together this evening in uh, a joyful memory, even in these sad times. Let us pray. In the words of St. Hildegard of Bingen, the woman who challenges us to live our faith like Sister Lindy did. Cry out and speak of the origin of pure salvation until those people are instructed who, though they see the inmost contents of the scriptures, do not wish to tell them or preach them because they are lukewarm or sluggish in serving God's justice. Unlock for them the enclosure of mysteries that they, timid as they are, conceal in a hidden and fruitless field. Burst forth into a fountain of abundance and overflow with mystical knowledge until they who now think you are contemptible because of Eve's transgression are stirred up by the flood of your irrigation. We pray that the burst that this woman from Bingen calls forth may indeed be the voice of Lindy Omabuza to us tonight, even as we reflect together on the great mysteries of her life presented to us in our conversations. And even as Lindy were considered Jesus to be a sibling of her life, we commit ourselves to the same siblinghood in the prayer that Jesus left for us, our Father in heaven. <laughs> Thank you so much for the opening prayer, Bishop. We truly, truly appreciate it. What color is love? Is it mauve or is it peachy pink? Perhaps it is red or black, like they call my skin. How much does it weigh, this love? Is it heavy 
and bright or light and dull, this thing called love, Mazengs. We must try to understand it, to feel its contours, to allow it to engulf us, and if needs be, to destroy us. What color is love, and is it smooth and round, or is it simply just, neither here nor there, but in fact, everywhere? Ambassador Lindiwe Mabuza was a work of art, a literal piece of art that could not walk into any room unnoticed. She created art wherever she was. She called it to her. She supported the arts and most importantly, she embodied them. When we gathered here yesterday, we heard stories about Ambassador Lindy Wemabuza, the friend, the prayer warrior, the member of her beloved Blonso Stockfeld and the veteran. Many of them Blonso members who are in and of themselves veterans, I might add. As I prepared to go to bed after the service, I could not help but chuckle to myself, recalling the speeches that were made. Be it Dr. Ayanda Tsaluba or Dr. Bregalia Bam or Dr. Pumzil Mlambo Nuga or any of the esteemed speakers who spoke so lovingly of Gokolindi, not one of them, not one of them could mention her name without speaking about how utterly fabulous she looked, always dressed to the nines, words such as exquisite, fashionable, beautiful, gorgeous, always. That is because Ambassador Mabuza was truly a work of art. Tonight, we once again gather here to celebrate the legacy that is this illustrious, generous woman who was meticulous in every way. We have chosen to shed light on her relationship with the arts, truly one of her greatest, greatest passions. And when I say art, I really do mean it in every sense of the word. Fine art, sculpture, literature, dance, music, you name it, and Goko Lindy loved it. She did not believe that art should be separated really from anything. The number of people who she inspired to love art, to make art, the number of artists that she supported financially, or housed, or got scholarships for, or even just religiously went to go and support. It really is amazing. And I do believe that the number is far greater than any of us actually really realize. Goko Lindy used her art as an effective tool to fight for the liberation of this country. She possessed a keen understanding of how art could liberate humans and how it could unite us. One of Gokolindi's favorite quotes by O.R. Tambo, and all of you present here today know that Gokolindi had no shortage of favorite quotes by O.R. Tambo. But one of her favorite quotes by O.R. Tambo was a quote that he said not long after oh, watching the Amanda group uh, perform in London in the early 80s. And he said, it took the Amanda group two hours to do what it has taken me almost 20 years to achieve, to explain to the people of England that we are all equal and that apartheid was wrong. Yesterday, we had Lindiwe Sanguenicido who came and gave us a bit of context of Goko's peaceful transition on Monday. And I'd like to call her back today to once again set that context. I know that you did give us this information yesterday, but every day we've got different people who are coming to listen and celebrate the life of Goko Lindy. And so if I can ask you, Lynn, to please give us some context as to the transition of our beloved Goko. Thank you so much, Zeng, and, and good evening to everybody who has joined us virtually to celebrate the life of Auntie Lindiwe, Comrade Lindiwe, Sissy Lindiwe, Squeeza, Gogo, and many, many other terms of endearment. And I guess all of us would recognize even the endearment stand. You know, um, sometimes repetition is a way also of absorbing the grief. And as Zeng says, we have told this story and I have been asked to repeat the story of the last moments of Auntie. I think it's good to um, give the preamble of a joyful time that we've all um, celebrated with Auntie Lindy in her last six or seven years. 
And Lindy was very sick for a period of four years, shortly after she had um, retired from the diplomatic corps and from her role as high commissioner in the United Kingdom. And when she came home, we slowly watched her getting very sick and really becoming bedridden for a good four years, going from doctor to doctor. It was a miraculous turnaround brought about by a total change of life where she decided having met with some comrades uh, that the way forward to a better health would be one of no meat acupuncture in a Chinese um, method of, of, of healing. And the famous Dr. Jimmy Liu, who's known to many of us, was introduced to Auntie Lindy. And then she started her journey of revival, of coming back, coming back to life. And when Aunt Lindy was able to understand what it meant to live a life of purity, as in no meat, no animal foods going through her body, she was able to even get up out of that bed, stop taking any medication and continue purely on acupuncture and a new life. She traveled all over, she visited friends, she partied with Mblongso, her stock fell, she partied with us in family, and Lindy was unstoppable for the last six, nearly seven years. Almost as if she was enjoying what she now understood nobody should take for granted, a good health and a nice, easy way of living. And what seemed very stringent to some of us, being a vegan, um, we discovered new dishes. She guided us on how we could spice up her vegan dishes, and she was the true, um, as you know, good chef in her earlier years, telling us and guiding us on what could be done with lentils and what could be done with black rice. Nonetheless, to the latter part of last year, a very difficult year for all of us, having um, undergone the onset of the pandemic, and Lindy was diagnosed with having cancer, cancer of the womb. It was a big shock to all of us. Um, it was there were a few cancerous uh, cells, so it was still in its early stages. And she was advised that this was something that could be managed. And so a hysterectomy was meant to correct that. She continued with her life of acupuncture, albeit under very stringent and difficult conditions of COVID. And Lindy did not feel well in the month of August leading up to her birthday. And for a few months, even before that, she had not been feeling very well. And finally, her Dr. Lu actually advised her to go to a conventional doctor because he too was worried that there were certain aspects that he was unable to deal with without her going to a conventional doctor. She listened and she did this and we thank him for his graciousness of even um, recognizing that it was time for her to go to a conventional doctor. On this uh, eve of her birthday, this year, the 13th of August, and Lindy was diagnosed with cancer. She was immediately um, advised to begin radiation, which she reluctantly did. She had really not been taking any type of medication for the past six years. And so this was a very difficult step for her. We remember her going into hospital, being in ICU. And I think it's also good just to delight you all with some few um, you know, mem memories of Aunt Lindy arriving in ICU wearing her pearls and her pearl earrings, string of pearls around her neck and her pearl earrings and her manicured nails. Uh, so Aunt Lindy didn't do things lightly as we've heard in the last few days of people talking and regaling us in Zeng's opening of how simply fabulous she was. She was friends with all the nurses in no time. She had nurses running up and down, getting all sorts of little things for her, calling some of us to bring an extra blanket or a pair of socks. This place is cold. You need to bring me something. And so that was Aunt Lindy taking over her ICU ward. She continued for a good month of, of, of August and into September, following and pursuing this treatment. Towards the end of uh, September into October, unfortunately, the diagnosis on the eve of her darling daughter, Tembi's birthday, Tembi's birthday being on the 1st of October, and Lindy was diagnosed with stage four cancer. The cancer was spreading very fast. If you want to know what Aunt Lindy's reactions were, to those of us who were watching, she was calm, 
She was worried, but calm. And she was resolute in her way forward in terms of how she wanted to approach this. She was not keen for chemotherapy. That was her choice. But she did undergo the radiation, which seemed to give temporary relief. We continued visiting Aunt Lindy in hospital, in ICU ward. I think a bit frustrating for her because there were limited visits. We had to take turns, the height of uh, the pandemic, as we all know, making it all the more difficult for us to really go in and visit this person who so much delights in the company of people and friends and family um, and thrives on the heartthrobs of others heart to heart. On the um, eve of November the 1st, it seemed everything had an eve. Anindi started whispering into some of our ears, I'd like to come home. And she kept saying, Gifunubuele kaya. Of course, when someone is very sick in hospital, that's very worrisome when someone says they want to come home, Gifunubuele kaya. You're not really sure. And we couldn't really read what she was trying to say. But her demands, Ubuele kaya, became far much more specific. I want to come home to a Thanksgiving. I want you, Utini Shabele Abapansi. I would like a traditional ceremony where you find a beautiful lamb or sheep rather, and we give thanks to Abba Pansi. We give thanks to the ancestors. And I want this to take place at home where all of you family will come and celebrate my homecoming. Very soon, more of us had received her phone calls from hospital in her ICU bed. And so we decided that we had no choice but to fulfill our matrix requests, which were becoming far much more clearer. She continued to insist that she would come home and she instructed Tembi that she would not wait for the doctor's Wednesday, which was the date to come back to the house, but she would come home on the first. And really at this point, and Lindy had read exactly what her situation was. She was coming home to what she understood very clearly to be palliative care. She understood very well that her stage four cancer was spreading very fast. And she understood very well that her journey was to come home. And then we saw it all unfold in front of our eyes. First with the Thanksgiving event or function, done very carefully, I want to add, in the backyard with lots of fresh air, where all of us gathered. When we wanted to talk to her, we stood at her window from outside and we regaled her with worship, prayer. We sang a freedom song. We had little children waving through the window. And in true regal Auntie Lindy style, she waved back in her regal queenly style, smiling and really, really pleased that she had achieved what she wanted in terms of getting the family around. We had family from Limpopo, from Newcastle, from all over. That weekend marked the beginning then of a slow deterioration of Aunt Lindy's health. But even under that condition, she continued to call friends. Tembi would see friends arriving at the door. Of course, many friends always called Tembi to check, but some were summoned directly by Aunt Lindy herself, and they would just announce themselves as they arrived 